Ten out of ten, Henry. My name is Henry, and I recently went into business with a longtime friend named William. We bought the rights to this character named Fred Bear and rebranded into a pizzeria with arcade games and singing animatronics. He is the business end, and I am the creative end. My creations were supposed to help kids, but now they've seemingly been warped, molded into something else entirely. The police said that they can't help me, but I know what Afton has been doing. He's trying to take children away from their families, but not before doing unspeakable things. I tried to buy him out yesterday, use the shotgun clause in our contract, but he was able to outbid me. Now he owns the company and I'm stuck here with nothing. My daughter keeps trying to go, saying even if I don't own the company she still loves what I made. But I know what he will do if he finds her. I've banned her from going, but still added a secret part to her favorite bracelet. That makes sure our security protocols focus on her. It sounds selfish I know, but wouldn't you do anything to save your kid? Why, why is, now, why is there someone knocking? This isn't good, uh, we need to leave. Where's my daughter? What the hell is at my door? And at nine, Chuck E. Cheese. When I was in college, I was a night guard at Chuck E. Cheese. Well, night guard is sort of a loose term here. After they closed, I would have to stick around for a few hours and make sure no kid was hiding in the store or that the animatronics were turned off. Well, one night, I swear to God, it was almost exactly like these damn games everyone's been freaking out about. One summer night, it was close to the end of my shift, which at that point was 3 a.m. I was waiting in the security room with the cameras on, with YouTube on my phone, watching the latest videos from my favorite YouTubers, when all of a sudden, I see movement on the cameras. I look up, and I see one of the animatronics dancing. I don't know how it got turned on, but I went to go turn it off, and it was gone. While I was out there, another one started dancing. But then it put its hands on the banister that the robot sit behind. Then the curtain closed and I heard nothing. I went to report it to my manager, but my watch fell off as the time hit three and I just left it alone. When I got back the next day, the robot was back. I still don't know what I saw that night, but I've never worked another security job again. And it ate crying child. I loved Freddy Fazbear's as a kid. I would go there every weekend with my friends. Our parents would talk over a few beers and everyone was happy. We would play games, say hi to Freddy and the gang, and have the time of our lives dancing with everyone. Until November of 1996, when our lives got changed forever. We were playing skee ball until I had to go to the bathroom. When I got back, my friends weren't there, and their tickets were hanging out in the machine. I grabbed them and went back to our parents, who said that they had gone to the bathroom, which wasn't true because I was just in there. I started heading over to see if they were really in there, but as I walk past a dark room, I see someone with them. He was tall, he looked old, and had a purple shirt on. <laughs> Awkward. He put a head on one of them and then turned around and saw me. He started towards the door, but then I ran back to my parents. He came out and I pointed at him, saying that he had my friends. My parents just said it was a good time to go and took me home. My friends were never found. Nobody believes me. They say that I was only a kid then, but it's been over 20 years, and they never looked where I told them. Idiots. All of them. And it's seven, Sheikah's Party World. After the fall of Freddy Fazbear's, the IP to the characters were still intact. So, an individual named Riley bought the rights to Chica, the yellow bird with her signature cupcake. They opened a new pizzeria with new branding, but still in the same building. It had all the amenities that one needed after all. We would regularly have officers at the location, constantly checking to make sure that Afton never showed his face, and he never did. But then we noticed neither did the owner. After talking to some of the employees while off duty, they had never met the owner either. The man was said to only arrive after the place had closed and everyone had left to take the earnings from the register. We ran the owner's name against our database and there was nobody in the city with the name Riley Dramakovic. So after obtaining a warrant, we discovered what we had feared the most. Riley was an alias for one William Joel Afton, who, after running this business under the alias, had used it to kill 15 more kids in the span of one week, all after hours, and all after following a pink chica around back after they had gotten home. Suspect was arrested at 11.36pm on Tuesday, June 18, 1996 by arresting officer William Clayton. And at 6, Springtrap.exe. Five Nights at Freddy's 3 just came out. I've been a fan of the series since the beginning, especially after everyone was making theories about the story. I wanted to play 3 when it came out, but I never really had money. I was looking for the game online, but all I could get was links to buy it. And the only links I were finding were to a website called Pirate Bay that was using a separate program. I tried installing the program to get the game, and it worked for a while, but instead of being called Five Nights 3, it was called Springtrap. I guess it was to make things sneakier, maybe? I loaded the game when it was installed, but this wasn't a Five Nights game. The game only had Springtrap on the menu, and I knew who he was because of all the theories online, and he was staring at me. But his eyes always followed me. Not my cursor, but me. 
I loaded the game and I was a security guard, but instead of being in the security room, I was in the main door to the place. Text faded onto the screen saying escape and I heard things fall behind me. I turned around and nothing was there. I tried opening the door but the door was locked and I needed to find a key. I went to the first room I saw and it was a closet. There was nothing in there but as I turned to leave, Springtrap was standing behind me. He stared at me for what felt like forever before walking out of sight. I exited the room and checked the others and there was no key at all. As I headed back to the main room, Springtrap was there at the door, standing in front of it with a key around his neck. He takes it off and gives it to me. I open the door and as I walk out, he says, I always come back. Then I get pulled back inside, the door slams and Springtrap starts tearing me to shreds. The game deleted itself off my computer after that and I haven't looked for it since. It's understandable. Halfway through in a number 5, it's me. I am not Chica, I am not Freddy, I am your worst nightmare, hello it's me. I am not Foxy, I am not Bonnie, I am coming for you, hello it's me. The faster you go, the louder I shriek, that's how you know it's me. And when you feel cold and only see gold, then you'll know I have your soul. Edit for Sound Disc. I finished watching all the theories on FNAF, they were so interesting, and I loved the thought behind the sound discs. See, for the past few nights I've been seeing things. Seeing things like my Golden Freddy plushie walking and my stuffed Bonnie jumping on my bed. But ever since seeing that, I'm worried that it will get worse. Update, I was right. Last night I had some of the worst dreams imaginable. The monsters were coming after me. It was almost exactly like the FNAF 4 gameplay. But but only in my house. I don't know what to do. I don't think I can handle it anymore. I might just give up. Getting close to the end of number 3, Help Wanted. My local Chuck E. Cheese had a Help Wanted sign in the window, so I figured I would try applying since I've played all the Five Nights games. When I brought it up at the interview, the manager hired me on the spot. I thought it was a joke, but later on I figured out why. My first night was exactly like the Five Nights games. Some recorded messages teaching me about the job, and since the managing security guard was on maternity leave. And it had a similar setup to the games. Nothing happened until the next night, where animatronics started playing songs and dancing. The next night, one of them was missing, even though it was there earlier in the day. And I just thought it was my mind playing tricks, but I found it in the kitchen. My final night was where it got bad. All the animatronics were gone, and I saw them walking on the security camera. They were walking towards me. So the only thing I thought to do was jump out of the window and never go back. The place was shut down a week later for foul odors and ooze coming out of the robots. Penultimately, in a number two, Michael. I know my father's secret. My name is Michael. You may know my father, William. I saw him carrying bags home after work, but when I looked inside, I saw people. People who I once called my friends and were cold, pale, and lifeless in a bag being carried by my father. When I confronted him, he told me to stay out of it, but I am not letting this happen. I know that my sister died, but she wouldn't want this. He asked me why I couldn't get over it, and obviously because I can't get the image out of my head. Carrying bodies of dead kids? I don't even know how long you've been doing this. He didn't like it when I said that. He took one of my arms and one of his robots and hit me. Everything went dark, but I could still hear him. He said he wanted to put me back together, whatever that means. And finally, in at number one, Juniors. I was with a few of my buddies grabbing some drinks at Juniors, a bar down the block from me. The bouncer called him William and tells him that he knows he's not allowed in. We have no idea why, and we've been coming here for the past few years, and we have never heard the mention of anyone named William. Then the guy starts getting aggressive, yelling and even shoving the bouncer. At least it explains why this bar has a bouncer, it's for this guy. All of a sudden he falls to the floor, and this William guy comes strolling in with a shirt now tinted red. I start freaking out, but my friends are telling me to stay calm. William then yells for someone named Henry, to which the guy behind me stands up. What do you want, William? William yelled that he snitched and started walking towards us. My friends and I got ready to stand up, and Henry pushes my shoulder back down, telling us to stay seated. You were killing kids, William. He said, Henry told him quietly, but my friends and I heard him. William smiled and said, if that's how you see it, before walking away. But before closing the door, he leaned back in and shouted, Call your daughter, tell her I say hi, before walking outside and waiting at his car. Henry does and he doesn't get an answer. That's when my friends and I spring into action. We run outside and see a clown standing in front of us. She looks shiny and has orange pigtails and was way taller than any of us. I heard the sound of metal on metal, but then everything went black. 
and attend the Fredbear virus. While refreshing skunkgames.com, I was waiting for a teaser for FNAF 4, but the screen went black. After a while of waiting, I saw something flash on the screen. It looked like a weird Fredbear. After it appeared, my computer got the blue screen of death and I had to shut it down. Then I turned it back on. There were all kinds of numbers flashing by, but I swear I saw Golden Freddy a few times. Five minutes later, the screen was tinted red, and I started hearing church bells. Distorted church bells. It rang 12 times, and sure enough, it was midnight, but I swear it was like 3.30, 15 seconds ago. Then, it showed my desktop, but the only icon was SC877Games. Eventually, I clicked it because why not? Well, I'll tell you why not. This is why not, stupid. When it loaded, it was a close-up version of Fredbear's face, and it played the jump scare audio. Text on screen said Fredbear underscore virus dot exe has started running, and it kept showing that. After saying that a few times, my computer shut off and wouldn't turn back on. In at 9, why me? I was having a birthday party at one of the most fun places on earth. My parents were finally letting me have my 6th birthday party at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. When we got there, my friend Brian was already there. I yelled hi and he yelled hi back. After a few minutes, my other friend Jenny showed up. Since it was their first time here, we decided to sneak backstage with my other friends and see Freddy himself. When we did, I ran over and hugged him, and he hugged me back. I asked when Golden Freddy would be out and he told me a few minutes, but to follow him and we could go get some pizza. He asked what my name was and I told him Noah, Noah Blackley. We followed him into the room, but he was gone, and a man in a purple sweater had arrived instead. The last thing I remember is screaming as someone was banging on the locked door, and seeing my friends getting put into some spare suits. A few years later, someone walked in looking for a job as a night guard. Someone on the phone greeted him and asked for his name. He said his name was Frank Blackley. Oh my god, it's him. Dad! Dad, it's me! It's me! In an A plus trap. I am a huge fan of the Five Nights series, the wonderful world building and the rich lore. I love the game so much that I collect Five Nights and memorabilia and collectibles. My favorite is an exclusive plush trap stuffy I got from Hot Topic. It's so creepy, but I love it. I have it sitting on a stool in the corner of my room. Four is my favorite FNAF game, so getting it for Christmas was incredible. I asked my mom where she got it because they were so exclusive and only were out like two years ago, but she said she got it from a man selling his late daughter's things because they were too painful to look at. I think I know why she died. A few nights ago, I think Plush Trap started moving. He would be in different positions when I woke up, and not just positions where he fell over. At first, I thought my dad was messing with me, but he swears he knows nothing about it. Last night when I woke up, he was at the side of my bed, sitting on the ground. I don't think that I can fall asleep tonight. It's like he's staring at me. It's 7am and I haven't been asleep. It's light out now. It should be okay. Right? And it's 7 Helpful Foxy. Have you ever thought about Foxy? I mean, he's a fan favorite after all. And look at the animation when he comes into your office. He isn't really attacking you, but instead he looks like he was checking in. Maybe he tried to save someone and got damaged, hence the hook. So instead of spending money on the repairs, they put him behind a curtain so the other animatronics wouldn't attack him. I know this for a fact. When I was playing the first game, I forgot to check on Foxy and he came into my room, but the game didn't end. He walked behind me and waited. I was waiting for the jump scare, so I didn't continue the game, and when Chica had showed up at my window, Foxy ran out. The same sounds as when someone is in the kitchen played, and then he ran back in. And when I loaded in the next night, the two animatronics were gone, but Foxy was too. And it's 6, night 8. I thought this game was 5 nights at Freddy's. When was there a bonus 6th and secret 7th night? What's this then? A nightmarish night 8? Well, for those of you crazy enough to still like the series, I guess you'll be excited. I finished night 7 and there was an option to continue, and it brought me here. I don't know how difficult it will be, but I'll let you know after I try. Update, I just finished the night. It took me three hours and multiple attempts, but I did it. The night was crazy, all animatronics coming at all times, extremely fast. Even Foxy had to be checked on every five seconds to keep him contained. I figured out if you don't check the hallway though, they can't register Foxy in your office, so I pulled that trick and it worked. Time to get some sleep. I realized how dark it was outside. The next day, night nine. What is this game? I don't even remember waking up, let alone there being any mention of any night past five. Whatever, I might as well play it. I need to get to the bottom of this. Night 12? How many nights can there be? It's gotten so bad, all I can remember is this game. Whenever I can register what's going on, I'm at my computer playing in the middle of the night. Wait, now I'm really focusing and I don't see my computer. It's just the office. Oh no. I break through into number 5, Bells. I've been awake all night. I can't handle it anymore. The monsters are coming. They're terrifying. The teeth, the expressions, the stomachs. The monsters keep coming down the hall. 
the Foxy keeps appearing from the closet, and the only time I know I'm safe is once those damn bells go off. The grandfather clock in my room. Once it's 6 a.m., the monsters stop. They leave me alone. They go back to whatever corner of hell they came from. I think they're scared of it, and they know. Last night, I caught Fred trying to get into the clock. Luckily, as he left, the clock rang and it was 6 again. But tonight, I'm worried. The mania starts. I run to each door, listening for sounds and to the closet to make sure that the toy stays a toy. And don't even get me started on the bed. No matter what I do, there is always something there. I don't think I hear anything outside, but then crash. I look and the grandfather clock is missing. No, it's not. It's on the ground in pieces. They smashed it. Now I have no bells to protect me. They're coming. In a four, I am Afton. My name is William Afton. I'm do not me. Not me, I'm not. I'm gonna put that on the record, don't sue me. <laughs> my name is William Afton. I'm doing my best to try and handle what has been happening to me because I'm stuck in hell. I've been cursed for my attempts to put my beautiful boy back together. Now the creatures I created in order to aid that goal have been sent to torture me for no reason. Anyone would have tried to save their child, and if they had my technology, my mind, my brilliance, then they would have done the same as me. I keep getting told about the one I should not have killed. I was the one who was killed. My boy was my life. His life was directly tied to mine, so of course I tried to get him back. How dare you try to punish me for that. Leave me to my demons. Getting close to the end in number three, poster. I am an artist, and being a fan of Five Nights, I also make FNAF fan art. One of these pieces is the crying child poster on the walls from the first game, and after hanging it up on my wall, it also seems to be too accurate. After hanging it up, it started changing like the ones in the first game. My parents think I'm just changing it weekly, and honestly, I wish I was, because this is terrifying. My parents moved it into my room, since I was changing it so often, and now I have a haunted painting sitting next to me while I sleep. Undoubtedly our most vulnerable state. I don't know how to get rid of it. I keep trying to throw it out, but it just shows back up. I guess I just need to handle it, but I don't know if I'll be able to sleep. But ultimately, in at number two, Golden Freddy. I got a Golden Freddy plush my last time at Freddy Fazbear's. My dad and I were working so hard to make enough tickets to do it, and we did. My plushie is my new best friend. I take him everywhere. I take him to bed, to school, to daycare. It's been my only friend for the last few months, but recently things have been getting scary. It started glowing. His eyes have little red lights going on, but I can't be sure why. There also has been a man that I keep seeing. I see him at school, I see him outside daycare, and I see him outside my bedroom window. My dad never believes me. He thinks that the big kids are trying to scare me, but I don't know anymore. Now Golden Freddy's talking to me. He says, battery low, and then his eyes went black. What? I showed my dad and he ripped it open, and he found something inside. He smashed it, but I know what it was. It was a camera. I just don't know what it was doing in there. And finally, in a number one, stuffed. Me after pizza. Finally, my parents are bringing me to Freddy Fazbear's with David and Joey. When we got there, Golden Freddy was already out in the dance zone. David, Joey, and I ran over immediately because we love Golden Freddy. He was throwing tickets around for the prize counter, and he said that he had more in the back. He went to get them as we collected the remaining ones. When he took a while to come back, the other children went away. But we had just gotten there and he left so soon. So Joey, David, and I went to go find him. We enter one of the rooms and the door closes. We turn around and see Golden Bonnie. Joey loves Golden Bonnie, so he went in for a hug. And he got so excited that after he hugged him, he went into shock and fainted. He must have had ketchup on him because it started pulling around him. Then everything went cold. My mom told me to keep my jacket with me. But then I see David fall over too. And then Bonnie picks him up and the lights go off. And I hear metal clanging together. Number 10, one of a kind. This story happened to a friend of a friend of mine. Todd had always been a big FNAF fan. So when I was invited to his birthday, I found a Foxy plushie online and asked my dad if he would buy it for him. He agreed and I gave it to him as a present. The odd thing was when I was looking online, the only quantity for the plushie was one. And the description read, one of a kind. The next day after Todd's birthday, I sent him a text seeing if he wanted to come over and play video games with me on my Xbox, but he didn't answer. I went to his house just down the street after dinner to invite him, but his house was gone. In its place was a restaurant that appeared to be under construction. Number nine, Freddy Plushie. My teenage son is a huge fan of FNAF, so I bought him a Freddy Plushie. He fell in love with it, proving that if the theme is right, I guess you're never too old for a Plushie. However, at night, I noticed that the Plushie was moving through the house. I 
often wake up in the middle of the night with it on my bed. Sometimes I wake up and it seems like my room isn't even my room, but it's actually Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. One night I woke up from what I thought was a nightmare, where I was being stuffed into a giant life-sized Freddy plushie, except that there was fluff stuffing in my mouth when I woke up. I made my son burn the plushie after that. Number eight, hide and seek. Sarah and Lisa loved playing hide and seek, despite the fact that they both knew it was pretty childish. They were also both big fans of the FNAF series. They both took turns when playing together as to who was it, and even played a themed game of hide and seek at recess sometimes where one of them would be the animatronics and one would be the night security guard playing like a FNAF themed hide and seek. One time when they were playing at recess, Sarah hid inside a hollowed bush from Lisa, who was playing as the animatronic this time around. Sarah closed her eyes while she was hiding, but when she did, she found herself transported into Freddy's security room. She felt a hand on one shoulder. She turned around and opened her eyes, but instead of Lisa, it was Nightmare Freddy jump scaring her. Number seven, night eight. My friend Eric told me this story, but I'm not sure if it's true. Apparently there's a glitch in his original FNAF game where you can access a bonus night, which he calls night eight. Rather than being custom, it's a night where you're actually monitoring outside the restaurant by walking around and basically guarding the perimeter while leaving the animatronics locked inside so they can't escape. The weird thing is he said when he checked out his mobile tablet his character carried around outside, he noticed them calling his own name on the security feed. Eric, why did you leave us, they asked. Eric, why don't you come back inside and play? Eric is really good at FNAF, but this new level threw him for a loop, and one animatronic, Bonnie, somehow escaped the building. Just then the game froze, and his computer started to power down. He heard his doorbell ring, and a ghostly voice emanated from his computer speaker, telling him to answer the door and to come and play. Number 6. The Mysterious Restaurant this is a true story. Chuck E. Cheese's has always been one of my favorite places to go. So when I got to pick where the family went this weekend for our family outing, you can bet that I picked Chuck E. Cheese. But when we got there, the restaurant looked different. It had been rebranded as Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. The animatronics inside were all different as well. My sister seemed to really like one named Chica, a chicken with a bib on her and a cupcake in her hand. The last time I saw my sister, she was holding Chica's hand and walking away. She went missing while we were there, and I never saw her again. Number 5. Golden Bonnie I loved Fred Bear's Family Diner. It used to be my favorite place to eat until it closed. I missed it terribly and hoped it would reopen. While I was out for a walk one day, it appeared my wishes had finally come true. I stumbled upon a poster in the mall advertising the reopening of my favorite restaurant on November 8th, right on the day of my birthday. I was excited and I begged my mom to let me have my birthday party there. She agreed. When the grand opening day came, my friends and I piled into my mom's van and we drove out to Fred Bear's Family Diner. Except when we got there, I noticed it was different. It wasn't called Fred Bear's Family Diner anymore. Instead, it was renamed Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. After some time at my party, Bonnie finally came out, but he seemed different. He was golden, like at the diner, but he talked to us directly, inviting us children to come along with him. Do you want to have some more pizza and tickets, kids? He asked. We answered with an excited cheer. Okay, but then you have to come along with me. I followed him and he asked all of us what our favorite animatronic was. I answered Bonnie before he pulled me into the back room. I found myself placed carefully in a Bonnie suit and then my eyes closed. When I awoke, I found years had passed and I found myself unable to talk. Anytime I tried, all I could hear was the voice of Bonnie through the suit's voice box. Outside the back room, I heard someone asking to work the night shift. The person revealed that their name was Michael Afton. My brother. Michael, it's me, I shouted. Brother, brother, it's me. He didn't respond to my voice, and so I remained trapped at Freddy Fazbear's forever, determined to one day escape and get revenge. Number four, save me. A girl named Vanessa was always known as a loner who kept to herself. Looking for a place to live and not having much funds, she was forced to move into a downtrodden apartment with the limited amount that she had for rent. As a welcome gift, her landlord left her a note with a game. The note apologized for any rumors that she might hear regarding him. 
Thinking this was odd, but nice, Vanessa chose to accept the gift. Later, while out in town, she heard a rumor that her landlord was the son of a serial killer, which was why the rent in her building was so affordable, and why almost no one in town chose to live there. Shrugging it off as the rumors that her landlord had warned her about, Vanessa returned home. However, she noticed on her way home that a golden bunny animatronic seemed to be following her everywhere she went. She confronted the bunny, trying to lash out at it, but her hand went right through. The bunny apparently was in her mind. It began whispering to her, possessing her, and eventually she found her actions were no longer her own. She started a cult against her own wishes, her body and mind now fully possessed by the golden bunny. The bunny had programmed her to do its bidding, and her landlord, she would soon find out, was a man obsessed with demonic possession who went by the name of Michael Afton. Number three, the tapes. I found these tapes at a garage sale that were titled Pizzeria Biz. As I listened to them, I realized there were some sort of creepy confessions from a man who had seen something dastardly happen at a kid's pizza place. The more I listened, the more I found myself haunted by the ghost of an animatronic that was mentioned in the tape, a jolly but deadly character named Balloon Boy. The animatronic would haunt my nightmares, and I found myself in my dreams returning to a room that Balloon Boy had taken a young girl named Sally, mentioned in the tape. Tapes. I was tortured for what felt like eternity, and when I awoke, I found myself covered in bruises and cuts. I threw the tapes away the next day. Number two, the serial song. I have been the biggest FNAF fan since day one. I have played through every game multiple times and have all the collectible merch. My parents think it's just a phase and so aren't too concerned with getting me everything Five Nights themed that I asked for. I heard a rumor that they were actually making a serial, so I asked for that cereal the next time that we were out, instead of my regular Reese Puffs. My parents agreed, and the next day I went downstairs for breakfast, there it was, Freddy Fazbear cereal. I hurriedly and excitedly poured myself a bowl. My parents were still asleep. I was so excited I got up early just to eat it. It was even still dark outside. As I poured the bowl though, I heard music began to play. It sounded like Freddy's music from the game. I looked in the box thinking it must be some kind of hidden sound recording like in a birthday card. I didn't see anything. So as I poured the milk with one hand, I reached with my other hand into the box, feeling around for what was making the sound. Then I felt something latch onto my hand. It was tearing my hand apart, shredding it. I screamed out in pain and noticed that the cereal bowl was filled with little nightmare frettles, which pounced on me and began to bite at my face. The milk I was pouring also appeared to be red and thick, like blood. I got rid of all my FNAF stuff after that, and my parents are trying to sue the makers of the cereal, although we still haven't been able to track them down. Apparently the cereal was never for sale, it was never even created, but my missing hand and my scarred face remain as proof that someone must have been behind it. Number one, time to play. I always loved playing FNAF, but my mom was consistently worried that the game was too scary and told me to stop playing. She kept nagging me. So to prove her wrong that the games were not too scary for me, I offered to let her play. Something you should know about my mom is that she's a scientist who works in robotics and AI. She actually works for a big company that everyone knows, and has a big position there. Anyways, my mom accepted my offer, set on proving that the game was too scary, but she herself actually enjoyed the game, becoming obsessed like me. To the point that we actually bought a second gaming PC for my mom, which we kept down in the basement. My mom became so obsessed that I rarely saw her anymore except for dinner. But when I did see her, she looked really tired and run down like she'd been staying up all night. One night, I awoke to the sound of what seemed like a church bell ringing. My room was pitch black, so I reached over for my night lamp. Clicking it on, I saw at the foot of my bed a life-size Freddy Fazbear animatronic replica. The bear tilted its head and said in the most blood-curdling, crackly voice, time to play. In a tent, moon drop. As a kid, Freddy Fazbear's used to be my favorite place on Earth. The animatronics were incredible, more advanced than anything I'd ever seen, and the characters were lovable and unique. Nowadays, they still have the technology beyond our time, stuff I'm sure the government would love to get their hands on, but the atmosphere and the characters have changed. They've gotten creepier and changed from that old mom and pop shop feel that they had at their old locations. And something about this new sun animatronic just gives me the heebie-jeebies. I can't quite put my finger on it. It's like it has a whole other side it doesn't want you to see. That's 
what it feels like anyway. And once I ran into it alone, it proved me right. The way it changed was horrifying, nothing like I would have ever expected. It's like it shed its skin to turn into that moon thing. And its voice? It got so much worse, like it had been smoking since it was born. And its nails? Oh my, it was so sharp, at least the pain went away quickly. And at 9, any price. Taylor had always loved Five Nights at Freddy's. They had all the games. Their whole room was decorated in Five Nights at Freddy's merch, from their bedspread to their dresser to their slippers. But one thing they were missing was a glam rock Freddy mask. Taylor had been searching everywhere online to find one, but the only one he'd ever found got away from him. It was on eBay, and he lost a bidding war for it. In his rage, he'd managed to find out who got it and sent them an angry message, insisting he would have paid them any price for it. That night, he woke up in the middle of the night to hear a loud thud coming from outside his bedroom door. Groggly, he assumed that it was just the dog and woke up. When he opened the door, though, he saw a tall man standing before him. He was facing away, but as he turned around, you could see he was wearing the Glamrock Freddy mask. Any price, he asked, as he pulled out a large kitchen knife. And it ate the secret level. The Christmas update for FNAF Help on its flat mode was something interesting. It created a new area in the Pizza Party minigame that you could go to instead of ending the game. Everyone was making videos about this new never before seen location, and I was excited to check it out for myself. That was a big mistake. I got to the back room of the Pizza Party game once again, and this time looked to the right where a new door opens up. I clicked it and the screen goes black, but when I can see now, the level is nothing like I was shown on YouTube. Maybe they had a YouTube safe version, like maybe Scott had sent them a copy with another room. Maybe they were planning this all in unison, but oh my god. It was horrific. It was still outside that coming soon billboard like the original that was advertising security reach, but this time it was like a meet Santa kind of thing too, where kids were lining up to sit on Santa's knee and tell him what they wanted for Christmas so their parents could know. And I say were because, well, I don't think they were waiting in lines anymore. The snow was red and soaked with what I can only guess was the kids' blood, and their bodies were still laying there. 15 kids for the 15 victims of Purple Guy. The Santa was still there. I figured he was dead too, but instead, he removed his beard and somehow it was Vanny from the next game. I don't know how I didn't see it before. It felt like when Harvey Dent didn't realize it was the Joker until he takes the face mask off, but Vanny stood up and I quickly turned my game off before she had the chance to add me to her collection. And it's 7, the glitch trap virus. While refreshing scottgames.com, I was waiting for a teaser for security breach, but then the screen went black. After waiting for a while, I saw something flash on the screen. It looked like a weird glitch trap. After it appeared, my computer got the blue screen of death, so I had to shut it off. But when I turned it back on, there were all kinds of numbers flashing by. But I swear I saw Springtrap a few times. Five minutes later, and the screen was tinted red, and I started hearing church bells. Distorted church bells. It rang 12 times, and surely enough, it was midnight, but I swear it was like 3.30, 30 seconds ago. But then it showed my desktop, and the only icon was SC877Games. Eventually I clicked it because why not, and when it loaded it was a close up version of Glitch Trap's face, and it played jump scare audio. Text on screen read Afton underscore virus dot exe has started running and kept showing that over and over. After saying that a few times the computer shut off and wouldn't turn back on. And now I have a strange desire to see my son again. And at 6, Chica's Party World. After the fall of Freddy Fazbear's, the IP to the characters were still intact. So, an individual named Riley bought the rights to Chica and Freddy, the yellow bird with her signature cupcake, and the company's iconic bear. They opened a new pizzeria with new branding, inside what used to be an old mall. It had all the amenities they needed after all, plus a little more. We would regularly have officers at the location, constantly checking in to make sure that Afton never showed his face. He never did. But then we noticed, neither did the owner. After talking to some employees while off duty, they had never met the owner either. The man was said to only arrive after the place had closed down and take the earnings from the register. We ran the owner's name against the database and there was nobody in the city with the name Riley Jermakovich. So after attaining a warrant, we discovered what we had feared most. Riley was an alias for one Vanessa Afton, William's estranged daughter, who, after running this business under the alias, had used it to kill 15 more kids in the span of a week. All after hours and all following a pink chica around the back after they had gotten home. Suspect was arrested at 11.36 p.m. on Friday, June 18, 2027 by arresting officer William Stagnan. Halfway through into number 5, Stuffed. 
Finally, my parents are bringing me to Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizza Plex with David and Joey. When we got there, Glamrock Freddy was already out in the dance zone. David, Joey, and I ran over there immediately because we all love Glamrock Freddy. He was throwing tickets around for the prize counter and said that he has more in the back. He went to get them while we collected the remaining ones. When he took a while to come back, the other children went away, but we had just gotten there and he left so soon. So Joey, David, and I went to go find him. We enter one of the rooms and the door closes. We turn around and see some form of weird Bonnie. It was white and it even looked like a girl. Joey loves Bonnie though, so we went to give him a hug and got so excited that after he hugged him, he went into shock and fainted. He must have had ketchup with him because it started pulling around him. Then everything went cold. Mom told me to keep my jacket with me, but then I see David fall over too. And then Bonnie picks him up. Then the lights go off and I hear metal clanging together. And in 4, Vanny.exe. Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach has just come out. I've been a fan of the series since the beginning, especially after everyone was making their theories about the story. I wanted to play Security Breach when it came out, but I never really had money. I was looking for the game online, but all I would get was links to like pre-order it and stuff. The only links I was actually finding were to a website called Pirate Bay, and they were using a program called uTorrent. I tried installing the program and getting the game, and it worked for a while, but instead of being called Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach, it was called Vanny. Vanny. I guess it was to make things sneakier. I loaded the game when it installed, but it wasn't a Five Nights game. The game only had Vanny on the menu. I knew who she was because of all the theories online. She was staring at me, but her eyes always followed me. Not my cursor, but me. I loaded the game and I was the security guard, but instead of being in the security room, I was in the main door to the place. Text faded on screen saying escape and I heard things fall behind me. I turned around and nothing was there. I tried opening the door, but the door was locked and I needed to find a key. I went into the first room I saw and it was the closet. Closet. There was nothing in there, but I turned around to leave, and Vanny was standing behind me. She stared at me for what felt like forever before walking out of sight. I exited the room and checked the others. There was no key at all, and as I head back to the main room, Vanny was there at the door. Key around her neck, knife in hand. Getting close to the end in number three, Fake Monty. For my birthday, my dad gave me a surprise, but he said I would have to wait for all my guests to arrive before I could get it. Once all the guests had arrived, it was just a short time passing before the doorbell rang. It must have been our pizza, I thought, so I ran to answer it. I swung the door open, and standing in front of me was a massive animatronic who I knew as Montgomery Gator. Their head tilted from side to side, and they looked me up and down. I became extremely uncomfortable, as it felt like their eyes were laser focused on me. Soon, my dad came up behind me and greeted the animatronic. Apparently, it was just a hired performer. At least that's how he talked to them. However, when Monty came inside, from their movements and the clunk of their feet, they didn't sound human. They seemed like a real animatronic. The party was awesome and I slowly started to become more comfortable around Monty, even enjoying the presence of my favorite fake animatronic for the day. However, at the end of the party, when Brad's mom came to pick him up, we couldn't find him anywhere. We also couldn't find Monty, who had apparently left without saying goodbye or without getting paid, according to my dad. All we did was find a bit of blood on the backyard fence. And ultimately, in a number two, locked in. Pitch black. Like nothing you've ever seen. Not a sound was made. Not yet, anyway. Then, the night lights turned on. Tinted red. Then a voice. Initiating nighttime protocols. That's when it starts. You can almost hear your blood pumping faster as the four alcoves light up. Roxy, Chica, Freddy, and Monty. The main animatronics of Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizza Plex. As the lights turn on, the animatronics themselves come to life, and they don't really take a liking to intruders. I run to the door, but it slams closed in front of me, and the gust of wind nearly knocks me over. I take a second to pause and think, how am I going to get out of here? When all of a sudden my thoughts are cut short by a bright light pointed directly at me. That same voice that initiated nighttime protocols calls out again. Intruder in the entrance cortex, priority target. I hear the walking of the animatronics increase. They're heading my way. Anywhere I move, the light follows me until I see a hand reach out from the darkness. Come with me, Gregory, it says. It sounds like a woman. I take her hand and it's kind of furry, but then the lights turn off. And finally, in number one, Roxy. It was Christmas Eve. I was so excited I couldn't sleep. I was laying in bed, but I just couldn't fall asleep. Eventually, I heard footsteps on the roof. Santa was here, so I had to fall asleep quickly, otherwise he would leave. I quickly shut my eyes, but as I do, I feel a hand on my shoulder. I look up and I see what I think is Roxanne Wolf. It has plastic-like fur, sharp teeth, and a weird, soothing smile. It motioned for me to follow him. I figured it was trying to help me see Santa, so I followed. We get down to the living room and I look to the tree. No Santa. I get upset because he must have left, but I hear something in the chimney. I jump for joy, but Roxy moves in front of me. As I turn around to see Santa, something else comes down the chimney. It looks old and torn and dirty, like it had just dug itself out of a grave. 
It looks like Freddy, but bigger and scarier. This Roxy moved me back, getting me out of the way, and motioned for me to run to the door. I didn't know what to do, at least until the giant bear burst through my back window, carrying the body of my father, who was dressed in a Santa costume. I closed my eyes, then everything went cold. Number 10, Any Price. Taylor had always loved Five Nights at Freddy's. They had all the games, their whole room was decorated in Five Nights at Freddy's merchandise, from their bedspread to their dresser to their slippers. But one thing they were missing was a Funtime Foxy mask. Taylor had searched everywhere online to find one, but the only one he'd ever found got away from him. It was on eBay, and after a bidding war for it, he lost. In his rage, he'd managed to find out who got it and sent them an angry message, insisting he would have paid them any price for it. That night, he awoke to hear a loud thud coming from outside his bedroom door. Groggily, he assumed it was the dog and got up to go check. When he opened the door, though, he saw an intruder in his home, wearing the Funtime Foxy mask. Any price, they asked him, brandishing a large kitchen knife. Number 9. Payback it couldn't be real. Funtime Foxy and the others had been locked away for so long. How could this be true? How could they be here? But the purple decaying body before him spoke with a collection of voices. Funtime Foxy is among them. You abandoned us, they said. And now, you will pay. And friends, if you are loving this list and you love creepypastas and you want some more creepypastas, be sure to let us know by giving this video a thumbs up. And share share your creepypastas in the comments below. I, I love reading creepypastas. They're, they're fantastic. It's such a fun exchange of creative writing. Number 8. Elizabeth's Friends Elizabeth loved to come to work with her dad. There were always so many fun new friends to meet. There was Funtime Freddy and Ballora, and today he was making someone new. After this new friend was made, he promised to make an animatronic just for her. She played in the metallic halls, each hop as she played with her skip ball reverberating off its walls. She started to sing a little song and was delighted when she heard Ballora's voice from her gallery join in. And then Freddy began to join in as well. From there, she heard a new voice. She continued to sing and followed it to her father's laboratory. There she saw a new friend, a pink and white fox. Meet Funtime Foxy, her father said. As Funtime Foxy blinked its eyes open for the first first time it smiled at her. She smiled back, then it looked at its surroundings, her father, and its expression changed. It seemed angry. You have imprisoned us, it said. It reached out and began to choke her father with its strong metal fingers. She watched as his body shook and spasmed. He was gesturing towards something. Elizabeth knew what, but she shook her head, her eyes wide. There was no other way, though, she knew. She smashed the button on the podium with her fist. She was sad when Funtime Foxy collapsed to the ground, having been shocked. Somewhere inside her, she knew this was her legacy, and it made her scared. Number 7. All of us. Sophie had just graduated school and was looking for a summer job to occupy her and help her pay her living costs during her final summer before setting out to look for something in her field in the fall. As she scoured the wanted ad, she noticed a job looking for a nighttime security guard that appeared to be part of Fazbear Entertainment and involved work in an underground facility where animatronics were held. She immediately got excited and was even prepared to make sure she went and got all the prerequisites needed before applying. However, she was confused but happy to see that there were none. The ad read, no experience needed. She was the only applicant apparently, so Sophie ended up being hired. On the first day of her job, nothing much happened. On the second day, she noticed some of the animatronics holding areas had become open, but she managed to secure them again before the animatronics wandered off. On the third night, Funtime Foxy's holding area became unlocked, but when she went in to secure it and check in, Foxy was nowhere to be found. As she searched the room, she heard from above, this is for all of us. She looked up, but could only see darkness squinting in the dim lit room. She shined her flashlight up towards the ceiling but did not have time to do anything else as Mangle's face, dripping with blood, greeted her. The animatronic jumped down, mauling her. Number 6. They're here. 
Josh was young when he discovered Five Nights at Freddy's. At first it scared him, but eventually he came to love the franchise, even going so far as to draw his favorite characters. He tended to draw Funtime Foxy a lot, but every time he drew Funtime Foxy, his older sister noticed that it appeared as though the animatronic was getting closer and closer in each picture. One night his sister came home to find Josh frantically coloring a page of paper light pink with a line down the middle. Where's Foxy? She asked Josh, admiring his work. He looked up at her with tired eyes. He didn't say anything, but merely looked down at the page and pointed. That doesn't look like Funtime Foxy, his sister replied. Josh said one word, close. The lights went out. The room was pitch black. As both Josh and his sister scrambled to get to the lights, Josh reached out and felt a cold, metallic foot. Number 5. Perfect Match Funtime Foxy loomed over the body, looking down at it, hands still dripping with blood. Foxy turned off the recording system within, set it to rewind, and then hit replay. The sounds of screaming came from its voice box. Internally, Foxy pushed pause abruptly, and then tested out this newly saved voice for itself. Hello, it's me, Jim, they said. The voice they spoke with was a perfect match for their victims. Number 4. I See You Funtime Foxy has always been my favorite animatronic from Freddy's, so I was very excited when I was at the store with my mom and I saw a new toy on the shelf that was Funtime Foxy themed that I had never seen before. It was almost retro in terms of its appearance, and yet the make and packaging made it look brand new. It was one of those toys that you'd pull the string on and it would launch the figure up into the air. In this case, Funtime Foxy or as it said on the box, your pal flying Funtime Foxy. I begged my mom to get it, and because I had recently done well on a test at school, she got it for me. At home, I quickly unpackaged it and took it to my room to play with. Nervously, I held the end of the ripcord, pulling gently towards myself and launching it into the sky. However, once it was up there, it continued to spin with its arms outstretched, not seeming to want to come down. I chased it around my room, calling its name, but it always managed to dart just out of my reach. I see you, it said, smiling down at me, before flying out of the window. I was sad and confused for a moment, until from the other room, I heard my mom scream. Number 3. Welcome to the party! I had always wanted to go to Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria, and now my dreams were finally coming true. It was my birthday, and Freddy's also happened to be celebrating its anniversary on the same day, with an unveiling of a new animatronic. Halfway through my birthday, we made our way to the stage for the unveiling. There was a giant pink sheet under the bright spotlight, and Freddy came on. He swiftly pulled it off to reveal an animatronic that he said was called Funtime Foxy. Everyone say hi to my new friend. And Funtime Foxy, Freddy chortled. We all smiled and shouted back, Hi, Funtime Foxy! But then, something went wrong. Funtime Foxy's eyes turned from orange to red, and their face plates moved back to reveal sharp teeth. Everyone screamed and began to run, but I got knocked backwards. By the time I managed to get back up, Funtime Foxy had found their way to me, holding a cake knife in one hand. Welcome to the party, they said, raising the knife. Number 2. The Daring Escape I had never been so scared in my life. I couldn't breathe. The sweat dripped from my brow, and I peered around the corner. I could just make out a flash of white before I pulled my head back behind the dismantled heap of animatronics. They saw me. They had to have seen me. I heard the heavy thud of their feet as they walked around the room searching for me. It was now or never. I thought. If I didn't do something soon, they definitely would find me and then I'd be scooped. I had to make it to the safe house. I couldn't let any of them find me. I breathed in as deeply and quietly as I could before bolting out from behind the heap. What I hadn't realized was that my foot was actually caught in a wire. That fleeting moment of freedom flashed by me as I tripped and smacked my head off the floor. The pile of parts crashing down on top of me, spilling out around me. Funtime Foxy's eyes locked with mine. They had me now. Number 1. Fake Foxy For my birthday, my dad gave me a surprise, but he said I had to wait for all my guests to arrive before I could receive it. Once all my guests had arrived, a short time passed before the doorbell rang. It must be our pizza, I thought, and I ran to answer it. I swung the door wide open, and standing in front of me was a massive animatronic, who I knew as Funtime Foxy. Their head tilted from side to side as they looked me up and down. I became extremely uncomfortable as it felt like their eyes were laser focused. Focus to me. 
Soon my dad came up behind me and greeted the animatronic. Apparently it was just a hired performer. At least that's how we talked to them. However, when Foxy came inside from their movements and the clunk of their heavy feet, they didn't sound human to me. They seemed like a real animatronic. The party was awesome, and I slowly started to become more comfortable around Funtime Foxy, even enjoying the presence of my favorite fake animatronic for the day. However, at the end of the party, when Brad's mom came to pick him up, we couldn't find him anywhere. We also couldn't find Foxy, who had apparently left without saying goodbye or without getting paid, according to my dad. All we did find was a bit of blood on the backyard fence. In a 10 the secret level, the Christmas update for FNAF Help Wanted's flat mode was something interesting. It created a new era in the pizza party minigame that you had to go to instead of ending the game. Everyone was making videos about this new, never before seen location, and I I was excited to check it out for myself. That was a big mistake. I get to the back room in the pizza party minigame once again, and this time look to the right where I see a new door open up. I click it and the screen goes black. But when I can see, the level is nothing like what it was shown on YouTube. Maybe they had a YouTube safe version, maybe Scott sent them a copy with another room, maybe they were planning it all in unison, but my god this was horrific. It was still outside that coming soon billboard like the original, but this time it was like a meet Santa kind of thing too. There were kids lining up to sit on Santa's knee and tell him what they wanted for Christmas so their parents could know. And I say were because, well, I don't think they're winning in any lines anymore. The snow was red and soaked in what I can only guess was their children's blood, and the bodies still laying there. Fifteen kids, the fifteen victims of Purple Guy. The Santa was still there, I figured he was dead too, but instead, he removed his beard and somehow it was glitch trapped. I don't know how I didn't see it before, it felt like when Harvey Dent doesn't realize it's the Joker until he takes his face mask off. Glitch trap stood up and I quickly turned off my game before he had the chance to add me to his collection. In a nine tree trimming, I was home after a long day of work. My girlfriend was coming over in a couple hours and my Christmas tree still hadn't been decorated. My girlfriend had already said that she was sick of decorating trees since she did one at her mother's and then one with her father. They had been separated since she was 15, nearly 10 years ago. I've been playing a lot of video games lately to pass the time before going to sleep since she had been so busy, and recently I've been playing Five Nights at Freddy's, an indie game series that really blew up, but I can't see why. It's not scary. At least, I didn't think I was scared. As I started putting my silver and blue ornament balls on the tree, something I planned to sign into conversation later, I thought I saw something standing behind me in the reflection of the blue run. I spun around and there was nobody behind me. I put a silver one up and I think I see something again, but this time I saw it properly. It looks like a giant chicken with arms and legs holding a cupcake? It was looking at me from my closet. I turned around and the door was closed. I went to check inside, but when I opened the door, there was nothing. I checked the reflection and it also had nothing in the closet anymore. I figured I was just hallucinating since I was tired and had been playing that game so much. But then I heard the closet door slam. I called my girlfriend and told her not to come. It's now 5am and I just need to wait until the sun comes up. An A plus trap. I love the Five Nights at Freddy's series. I've been a fan since the first game and I love the series even more every time a new game comes out. I have them all and I love playing them, especially at night in a dark room on weekends when I don't have school. For Christmas, the only thing I wanted was a plush trap doll, a character from FNAF 4 that really creeped the hell out of me. He was like a smaller version of Springtrap and there was this Etsy shop that described their dolls as faithful recreations, so I asked my parents for that and only that since it was fairly expensive. Luckily I was able to get the doll as well as a couple other things for Christmas, which was a nice surprise for me, but for the rest of the day I was running around playing with that doll. At the time I didn't realize what a big mistake I had made, but that Etsy shop wasn't lying when they said faithful recreation, although they should have included the whole moving in your sleep thing. He only moved a little the first few nights, slumping over and falling off the chair, but after that it got freaky. He would climb onto the bookshelf or on the top of my dresser, but wherever he was, he was always looking at me when I woke up. Last night, he woke up on my bed. He was laying on my other pillow, staring at me. My parents didn't believe me joked that that's what the faithful recreation meant, but now I'm terrified. I've painted a red X on the floor, and I hope that I can stop him on it. In 7 VR, the FNAF VR Christmas update didn't really change the gameplay. It fixed some bugs and added some decorations, but the gameplay was the same. Some places didn't even have the new decorations, like the Night Terrors for example. I don't know why a kid would want to decorate his room for Christmas, but hey, I'm not the one to judge. Especially if that kid is meant to be in a coma. But 
For some reason, the animatronics were dressed up. They were wearing Santa hats and left footprints of snow behind like they had just gone outside. This makes them easier to track, but they were also quick. Like a kid waking up their parents at 5am on Christmas morning quick. They had no regard for the amount of time it takes to get to the other hallway. As soon as they were gone, boom, they were on the other side. I don't know how they thought this would be possible, especially with Nightmare Fredbear. Fredbear was wearing a full Santa outfit, with the coat, the boots, the hat, everything. Maybe it was supposed to be comforting, but I was never able to survive until even 2am, let alone 6. Santa Fredbear is now my sleep paralysis demon. And at 6, the joy of Christmas. It's an early night on Christmas Eve. I was sitting in my living room watching my favorite Christmas movies from when I was growing up. The Santa Claus, Home Alone 1 and 2, Frosty the Snowman, The Year Without a Santa Claus, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, I'm sure you know them. But for some reason, I felt like something was watching me. I felt like I could turn to my left at any minute and someone would be standing there. This wasn't entirely false, since in a few hours I would see the face of true terror, but never in my wildest dreams did I think my own creations would watch and attack me. Hello. My name is Scott Coffin. You may know me as the creator of the Five Nights at Freddy's series, but this isn't an update, this is a goodbye. You see, a few hours after finishing the Santa Claus with my family, they went to bed, eager for Santa to bring them a bountiful harvest of gifts. But as I placed them down under the tree, I looked to my left and see a big purple foot, as clear as day. I knew that foot. It kept me up constantly while I was making the first game. It was meant to be blue, but the lighting made it look weird. Bonnie. I stand and see the others are not too far behind. They look mangled, destroyed, as if they had to climb through hell itself in order to escape the game world. When the other three arrive, Bonnie breaks the window and they pile in. They knew this house as well as I did. I guess they were created by me, so it makes sense. I quickly barricade my children's room in a futile attempt to save them from the unhindered wrath of my creation, but I know they're safe. They're here for me. Right, doing number five, Twisted Christmas. I was out late playing with my sister. Well, it wasn't really that late. It was 9 p.m. and we were still sledding. We eventually fall off the sled and stand up. My sister threw a snowball at me, so of course we had a full out battle. I couldn't just let her do that. But that's when the snow started moving. We ran on top of the hill to get a better view and some patches of snow had started shaking as if they were alive. Eventually the snow falls and we see what's really going on. Robots climb out of the holes in the ground like a horror movie. They were old and rusted like they hadn't been out of the ground in 40 years. They were moving slowly since they were old and cold, but there were many. A bear, a fox, a wolf, and what I think is supposed to be a rabbit? They were horrified. And then, they saw us. They all looked at us in unison. These things were like zombies with the way they came at us slowly. My sister was terrified, too scared to move, so I did the only sensible thing. Grabbed her, the sled, and ran. I ran past the school whose hill we were using and the robots were long gone, but that wasn't gonna stop me. I kept running as fast as I can all the way home. When I got there, I noticed that I had the sled, but not my sister. I swore I grabbed her. Where the hell did she go? And at four house on the hill. There was one house left on Santa's Christmas route. It was alone on a hill in the middle of what seemed like nowhere. There was an old rundown barn in the distance at the bottom of the hill, but other than that and a driveway, there wasn't really anything else. This was the last one, the Aftons. Michael had been naughty, so he was getting cold. However, his little brother had been through so much. Santa lands on the roof and climbs down the chimney, but this was a longer climb than usual. When he gets out, he seems to be in the basement, surrounded by robot parts in a giant vat of some boiling liquid. It looked like hot metal, but Santa could feel something else coming from it. It felt like the metal was crying. He was about to turn around when he heard the click of a shotgun. Who are you and what are you doing down here? A deep voice said. Haven't you ever heard of Santa Claus, William? Santa said. Put the gun down and let me go. William started lowering the gun. Bang! Shot Santa. Getting close to the end of the number three, presents. My dad and set mom were weird. They always had some quirk that they had to include in the Christmas gifts. Whether it be wrapping boxes in boxes, or if it be wrapping the gift multiple times with different wrapping papers only to watch us and get a chuckle every Christmas morning. This year they chose to put everything in those wind up boxes that's like a mini jump scare. Like the ones that play Pop Goes the Weasel and shoot out a clown. They said that they replaced the clowns and that if we wanted our presents we'd have to work for it. One of them also still contained a clown and if we found that then we'd get an extra special present. My brother and I went through all the different boxes trying to find the clown. I opened four and he opened three before he found it. When he found it, my dad brought out an extra big box. It wasn't gigantic or anything, but it was around 50% bigger than the others. He said that we had to open it together, so that's what we did.
As soon as it popped out, it jumped at us. It this weird decaying doll that looked like a malformed rabbit. My brother and I ran scared, but it grabbed his leg and started clawing at it, drawing blood and making him scream. Eventually he stopped and then it was on to me. As I lay there, bloody and dying, I looked up to see my father bring in two more robots, aside from the one that was our stepmom, one with a golden head and the other with orange pink tails. I never understood why he was so obsessed with those things, but I guess that's what I get for being an Afton. Number two, winner winner. Twas the night before Christmas, the whole gang was gathered, the bunny, the fox, and even the mallard. With the stockings hung by the chimney with care, we were in the home of Freddy Fazbear. The pizzeria was silent, as quiet as ever. They had but one chance for a final endeavor. They grabbed at the chicken so fast and so quick, they put her in the oven and cooked up the chick. When she was done, oh it was so tasty, they ate chica fast, and they had to be hasty. For the security guard with his new badge was due, he had been working there for about a day or two. He arrived on the scene to find such a cluster, so the animatronics gathered all the strength they could muster. He ran to his room, he shut the doors hard. Let's go back to the stage and play the off card. They returned to their station and stood very still. He opened the doors and thought he was safe until they came at him with frivolous force. He was there for five nights, then ran as fast as a horse. Finally, in a number one, Puppet. It was Christmas Eve. I was so excited I couldn't sleep. I was lying in bed until I could fall asleep, but no matter what, I couldn't. Eventually, I heard footsteps on the roof. Santa was here! I had to fall asleep quickly, otherwise he would leave. I quickly shut my eyes, but as I do, I feel a hand on my shoulder. I look up and I see what I think is a puppet. It had no eyes, red cheeks, and purple streaks down its face. It motioned for me to follow it. I figured it was trying to help me see Santa, so I did. We get down to the living room and I look to the tree. No Santa. I get upset because he must have left, but I hear something in the chimney. I jump for joy, but the puppet moves in front of me. As I look around to see Santa, something else comes down the chimney. It looks old and torn and dirty, like it had just dug itself out of a grave. It looked like a wolf, but bigger and scarier. The puppet moved me back, getting me out of the way, and motioned for me to run out the door. I didn't know what to do, at least until the giant fox came bursting through my back window, carrying the body of my father, who was dressed in a Santa costume. I closed my eyes, then everything went cold.